members of Freemason slash lodges slash cults slash secret societies. What were some weird things you experienced there? My grandfather was the last living member of his lodge. I and other family had to prepare the items to be given to another lodge or lodges. The lodge had a rolled safe. No one knew what was in there. We had the combination, but still no one could open it. Later members from the other lodge come to pick up the items. While packing they told us the safe did not belong to the lodge. And we told them we couldn't open it, but we knew the combo, and that the lodge had used it all the time. One of the other lodge members decided to try it. Damn thing opened on the first try. It held $5. 000 meant to be given to a children's hospital. The lodge's last action. I'm a current Freemason. Master Mason in Blue Lodge. 32nd degree in Scottish Rite. And Knights Templar in York Rite. The weirdest thing I ever saw was probably some goofy looking shrine of bobbleheads. Or the Grand Pooba hat we keep around for laughs. It's basically one of those water buffalo hats from the Flintstones. My college was basically a cult. It was in a church in Florida. We had to carry people up a mountain on a cart for team building. It was a total of like 9 miles. Someone almost died up there, and it was covered up. My friend started seizing, and they thought he fell out on the spirit. Lots of fucked up things happened there lol. Yeah, my parents began their marriage in a cult. My dad had just finished Bible college and this guy he graduated with was telling him about this amazing charismatic, theologically, church he was going to. They ended up having to tithe 10% of their earnings straight from their bank account each month. Only for it to be used for a new car for their pastor. The church made sure you hung out pretty much only with church members, and if you ever crossed the leadership, they threatened you with excommunication where literally no one would talk to you. So you would lose all of your friends. On one occasion my mother miscarried pretty badly and had to go to hospital. They gave my dad a pastoral visit over why she missed church that Sunday. He stood up for her. They physically assaulted him. They told the church they were going to leave and they said no. They left anyway because I was in the scene and knew they couldn't raise me in that environment. The church eventually collapsed so we still have friends from there who attempted to reform it and make it what it should have been. But I dunno, I get the heebie-jeebies whenever I talk theology with them. My family are all still Christians, we put it down to bad people. However, my parents have always struggled with church attendance, since and whenever problems crop up at a church, they usually move on. You must be one of these people that thinks secret things go on at these places. That's not what they're for at all. Literally no secret things happen there, except meaningless gestures to each other. It's just a place to socialize and network without religion or politics factoring in. Ex-Mormon here. Mormons, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, will vehemently deny that the church is a cult, but it qualifies under all metrics I've come across. For example, it meets arguably every part of this checklist. It also meets the criterion of the BITE model, an acronym for when a group attempts to exert control over behavior, intellect, thoughts, and emotions. The temple ceremony is a straight rip off of the Masonic rituals. In fact, the plagiarism was so blatant that for a long time Mormons weren't allowed to be Masons themselves. There's no weird sex stuff or anything like that, but from the dress to the rituals it's pretty much your run-of-the-mill culty behavior. But that's not the weirdest thing I've experienced, not by a long shot. The weirdest thing has got to be the Bible professors. Genuinely intelligent people, some at the very top of their fields, with partitions in their thought patterns. Cognitive dissonance turned up to 11, where as soon as the topic turns spiritual, the epistemological, logical and moral standards maintained in their secular life go out the window. I hesitate to use a word like mind control, because it conjures up glib and cliche images like the Manchurian candidate, mindless zombies who can't think for themselves. In reality it is much more sinister than that, and it is why it is so difficult to deprogram people who have fallen deep into the mind control trap. As people, it is incredibly easy to convince ourselves to believe things which regardless of their truth value, especially given an optimal environment, i.e. You want to believe, everyone else believes it, there are consequences for not believing etc. Mind control is simply creating that environment, and putting the subject to convince themselves. And once those beliefs take hold they inform behavior and emotions. It feels true. 
we shouldn't judge these people too much. We all have beliefs we have convinced ourselves of. Sometimes we are lucky, and they turn out to be true. Other times, not so much. How many political beliefs do you hold simply because you want them to? If you answered none you are sadly mistaken. From the inside it is almost impossible to judge which beliefs are really true, and which we have merely convinced ourselves of. To the believer, they all seem true, that's the point. But to see this concept played out to such extremes, it's unreal. Extremely intelligent people believing and doing outlandish and contradictory things. As far as I know the only way out is by luck. Lucky to have a person ask you those tough questions. Lucky to have an experience which shifts your paradigm. Lucky to notice that small contradiction and lucky to have the courage to follow it down the rabbit hole. But it's not all storms and sadness. Merely being conscious of this process, which, congratulations, you now are, is the first step to rooting out those pesky false beliefs. Though I'm mentally out, I'm going to buy you, and wouldn't you know it former LDS students get kicked out, I'm not kidding. So as far as everyone around me knows I'm still a true believing Mormon. I even teach Sunday school for crying out loud. Dating? Impossible. Every girl I know wants a return missionary who can take them to the temple. Socializing in general is pretty difficult. I try to be as genuine as I can, but yeah, the moment I finish my degree I'm out to here. One more thing, if this sort of thing piques your interest, check out r slash xmormon. The tales those guys could tell you. Ex-Scientologist here, being told sex is bad because you're letting someone else be cause over you. In Scientology there's this thing called the emotional tone scale showing Hubbard's view on emotions. They go from 40 to minus 40. Being effect or sex is quite low on this scale. Also all gay people are at one. One or covered hostility. The whole damn thing is weird. I've seen commands repeated hundreds of times in a day for auditing. Grown men and women bursting into tears or fits of rage during sessions. Being a second generation Scientologist made it quite difficult, but just the general language is odd. They speak an entirely different language, and have a completely different reality, that isn't compatible to the real world. I don't like the church at all but I did see a human being confined to a chair, paralyzed from the waist down, walk and get off their pain mess, because they were no longer necessary. It wasn't a recent condition. They had been in that state for years. One of the weirdest things I've ever seen. I would never go back, and to all of you with an itch of curiosity, walk the other way. Waste of time and money, that only goes towards brainwashing the desperate and gullible. My parents believe anything, if someone says that some villain doesn't want you to know, or the government slash big pharma has tried to destroy, they think silver is better for you than antibiotics or vaccines. Instead of taking you to a doctor, who's just trying to ruin you, by giving you drugs they'll take to a chiropractor when you're sick. Walk the other way. Paternal grandfather was head of his Masonic lodge 3 years running. Not weird as such, but at his funeral at least 300 old boys turned up fully sweated and booted. Everyone kept referring to him as worshipful master. 16 year old me thought that was pretty badass. Someone I know in Florida goes to a church. That is definitely cult city. It's a charismatic place run by a husband wife couple, except the guy wears these bright red robes and the leaders of the congregation sit at the front of the main room on thrones. All I know about it is through her social media posts, but I think the creepiest thing is the way she'd talk about the leaders calling her daughter in a really intimate way. Weirdest story ever was a faith healing she posted about where she said she had an ear infection. And the red robe church leader called her up to the front, and whispered into my ear in the most still, small voice, be open, and I could hear again. There was a girl I used to be friends with who panicked, when I once wondered aloud what the Freemasons do. I was talking in a group of friends and kinda asked the group. She panicked and told me in a hushed worried voice not to ever get involved, and to never look for them. Her family was mostly Freemasons. It always bothered me, still to this day. I was peripherally aligned with an anarchic poetry and heroin sewer cult in the Bay Area. Nice group of people, if you can find them, but yeah. Lots of heroin and poetry in the sewer. Well, I used to be an activist for various social justice causes. It wasn't much different from a cult as you were pressured to ditch your problematic old friends, so the only people you knew were in the movement. Things like having their own language, 
controlling behavior, etc. I'm glad I'm out. I work with a guy who was heavily into the masons, but life happened and couldn't go as much. He said, ask any mason and they'll say charity. I've seen that answer on this thread too. He said that isn't entirely true. They hold secrets even within themselves. He met a man whose title was the 33rd degree mason. He asked, how do I get to be a 33rd degree? There is number 33rd degree. Shit like that. If you aren't meant to know, you won't know. So if we ask people who were, they'll probably just tell us charity. Also, for the third degree mason ritual he said they had him in a candle lit room shirtless, pantless, and he had one shoe off. He had a noose around his neck and a blindfold on his eyes. They chant something, he recites something in latin, all memorized since you can't write anything down in the masons, and they hit you on the head with a hammer. He said, it wasn't a hard hit, but you know it happens, and once they do, that they rip your blindfold off and everyone in the room claps once at the same time, and they flick the lights on. It signifies your death as a normal person and birth as a mason. I might've gotten some details left out or slightly off, but I ask him Alad about the masons, and he tells me all of his experiences the others won't tell me. Grandpa, uncle and dad all three masons, honestly back in the day it was really a networking opportunity. You'd essentially have a network of people that were all part of the same club who'd help you out, choose you for a job as opposed to a non-mason, side with you in the courtroom, this one not so much anymore, unless you're in small towns, etc. My grandma, who is still living, is now helped out by my grandpa's brothers, they haul off trash, remove old tree limbs, etc. She really appreciates it, and recalls how my grandpa used to do the same thing for others when we're still alive. My dad and uncle aren't nearly as involved, don't go to meetings like my grandpa did, they still wear those rings though. My grandpa was a devout Christian, and nothing he did in the masons contradicted his personal religious beliefs. Sometimes there's really no secrets to tell, when it comes to this kind of stuff. Dad became a mason in the early 40s, while home on extended leave through some sort of fast track program owing to the circumstances of the war. His father-in-law at the time, a mason himself, convinced him that in the event of being shot down, the Germans might treat him favorably for being a mason. It could make the difference between being summarily shot and being taken prisoner. The thought was that Masonic affiliation transcended national interests. I'm sure that was sound advice given what was known at the time. I've since heard that the Nazis included Masons among the persecuted, so his membership may have actually earned him an express ticket to a concentration camp. I suppose it would have been a bit of a gamble, depending on who picked him up. In any event, Dad ended up fighting in the Pacific and was never shot down. If he had been captured by the Japanese, I'm sure his Masonic affiliation wouldn't have mattered one bit either way. By all accounts, the Japanese were equal opportunity brutalizers. Incidentally, the thought of having to bail out over the islands around New Guinea terrified the aviators as much as captured by the Imperial Army, as, correctly or not, the natives were assumed to be cannibals. So, I don't suppose this counts as a weird experience, but I find it an interesting historical footnote to Masonic affiliation. Younger Freemason here, I joined when I was 18, and I'm 21 now. The only weird thing I've ever heard was from this guy who traveled a lot to work and went to a lodge in whatever city he was in. He said he'd gone to a few lodges in very very rural Louisiana and that they still have active blood rituals. But Louisiana is just weird anyway. My grandma is a gozachic, which means she is an eye opener in my native language. So they are pretty much like a combination of psychics mixed with tengri like religious cult. All that would involve is getting out to mountains during rain and storm, do weird rituals, and searching for new members among her grandchildren. I didn't make it, but my sister did. It's pretty harmless, until they decided that she isn't gonna go through chemo for her stage 2 ovarian cancer, they gave her some roots to drink, and I shit you not she got better, no more cancer. I was haunted by that story, so I when I went to school and studied B.O. Well turns out that root is a very strong poison and acts in a way similar to chemo lulls. I was going to go throw away, but my grandpa, great guy, was a pretty high ranking mason, and so I went to the Masonic home and feet. Worth, which was a boarding school for kids who didn't have families, or otherwise couldn't stay at home. 
I had a great family, but my mom thought I was heading in a bad direction. Honestly, I would disagree, but I understand her thinking, and being as my grandpa held the position he did within the masons, a call was made, and I ended up going there for a short time. One year, 8 months and 27 days, to be exact. While I didn't see any sort of weird things in the sense of cult behavior, there was quite a bit of abuse happening there. Everything from sexual abuse to physical abuse, and even medical neglect. I knew a kid who was thrown against a tree by an adult, which resulted in a broken arm. Another child, who was very young, threw up while eating supper, and was then forced to ingest the vomit with a spoon. On site sexual abuse happened. There were instances of individuals in the organization being able to take kids out for weekends, which many times was harmless, and allowed so that the kids could get away from there and have a good time. But there were also times, not uncommonly either, that those kids were abused while on the off-campus trips. These types of reports go on and on. There were many. While these issues didn't avoid me completely, what I did experience is very mild in comparison to what some others went through. There was a good sized lawsuit that ensued with lots of kids slash families once it was realized what all was going on. I'm not allowed to go into the details of that lawsuit or its outcome, but I will say that the campus was shut down a few years after and has been closed since. A number of the houses and buildings remain, some crumbling, some repurposed, but the campus as a whole is a shell of its former self. All of that said, which I know is negative, I'd like to add this. While I didn't become a mason myself, although it's something I think about doing, don't let the above speak for masons as a whole. From my understanding and experience, masons are typically very kind, giving people, and the organization has done great things for a lot of people and charities over many many years.